Good day. Welcome to this exciting tutorial. You probably have seen this before. It's used a lot on television and film where a still image looks like it's moving or the characters are moving or maybe their eyes are shifting just a bit. So I'm going to share with you how to do this very special in-demand technique. It's sort of a parallax technique in a way that you have movement and things are staying still. But if you look at this particular case, now I did this very quickly, so don't pay attention to there. It looks like they have broken noses. This was done in Photoshop, what's called displacement maps. I'm going to show you a very simple way to do that. So as an example, we're going to be using Photoshop in today's course, Adobe After Effects, and also Adobe, I'm sorry, and also the ultimatum theme, my favorite go-to theme is WordPress. Of course, this can be used with any WordPress. We're going to make a slideshow out of that. That's what you're looking at right now. So sit back, relax. I'm going to share with you how to do this very in-demand skill set. It's very visual and it's very simple to do if you just pay attention to my proven technique. Thank you for being here. Roll up your sleeves, crack your knuckle, have a beverage, and I'll talk to you soon. What I'm about to share with you, for those of you that are photographers and familiar with the word depth of field, uh, there's actually a, a true depth of field that we can use using the camera tool. We're not going to do that. We're kind of going to do a faux depth of field. And there's a simple, simple way to do this. Incidentally, if I hit, uh, if I hit command zero, command zero, that's going to toggle. That will toggle between these two palettes. If, if you don't want to do that, just use your mouse, by the way. But make sure you're inside the project window. Now here's a very powerful production technique or a very logical production technique. Let's say you're not really sure what you're going to do with this. You're not sure what direction you're going into. You're not sure if the client's going to like it. Maybe they liked what you did yesterday. Maybe they liked what you did two days ago. So what I'm trying to share with you is don't shoot yourself in the foot. Always duplicate your composition. So I'm going to duplicate this composition. That automatically puts a two on it, composition two. Now I'm going to double click that composition because until you double click the composition, you can't see it. So right now I have my first composition, second composition. If you wanted to close this first composition, you certainly could. All right, so here's the objective. I want to basically have the background be blurry. Now keep in mind the background is now part of this image. I could have put a completely different background in there by silhouetting out the images, but I just want to work with what I have. So here's a simple way we can do this. First of all, I don't want to do it to this image. So I'm going to select that image and duplicate it. And let's hit the return key and let's call that CSS top mask. We're going to make a mask out of that. Now, the simplest way to make a mask out of something, by the way, I'm going to hit the return key again here. is to use a selection tool, more specifically the pen tool. So I'm just going to put a space in there so that it spells correctly, make a change, ch save a change. Now, unlike Photoshop or Illustrator, the pen tool is not P. The pen tool is the letter G because P is for position keyframe. So I'm going to move my playback head back home and I have this top area selected. Now, again, if it helps you to lock the other one in place, you can do that. Now, I'm not going to do a museum quality selection. It's just the idea behind doing it. I'm going to hit the G key and select the pen tool. Incidentally, most of these tools will toggle by hitting the subsequent. So if I hit G again, I'll get the next tool, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to hit the G key and go to that tool. So I'm going to take the pen tool. And again, I'm not going to make this a museum piece. It's just the understanding behind doing it. And I'm just going to mask out that back section or isolate it because that's the area I want to blur. And since I'm going to blur it over time, it's really going to come out with a very cool, slick, nice technique. Now, again, I'm not going to pay real attention to getting this exactly perfect. Okay, so this is, all right, this just, I just screwed that up there because apparently I can't shoot gum and walk at the same time. So I'm going to take this, come this around like this, come out to here, go over here, and boom, connect this together. All right, so to demonstrate what I have going on here, I'm going to hide. I'm just going to pause this for a second here. 
So to demonstrate here that this is masked out, if I hide the bottom layer, you'll see that that is basically the mask. The only thing I'm going to affect right now is that background. Now keep in mind, very importantly, that because this layer here is on top, I can actually blur this out because it's on top. See, it's just like Photoshop that's on top. So here's what I'm going to do. By the time I get roughly three quarters of the way through here, roughly about, uh, let's come down here. I'm going to hit the minus symbol and just zoom out of here. So let's say by the time I get to about the three and a half second mark, I want to see exactly what I'm seeing now. So I'm going to double click into my presets and I'm going to type in the word blur. And the blur that I'm looking for, I can either use fast blur or Gaussian blur. I'm going to choose to use Gaussian blur. Now, make sure you drag it to the correct layer. We want to affect this layer. So that's the layer I'm going to drag it to. And I's going to set the keyframes here. Now, keep in mind, here's where my playback head is. So if I drag, because my keyframes are set, if I move my playback head back to the beginning, I could basically make this very blurry. So how blurry do I want to make this? Well, it depends on what I want to do. If I want to make it really, really blurry, I could do something like that. So it depends on your taste and everything else. So right now, this is going to blur out. By the time it gets here, it's going to be in full focus. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to hit the tilde symbol. I'm going to hit the greater than symbol. And I'm going to hit control zero to render this out. So that's coming into focus. It's playing. Now, depending on how you have your playback set up, I have mine set up to play forward and then play back and play forward and play back. So notice that you're seeing just a little bit of movement inside the images and what's happening here. So you get a better understanding of what we just did here. I mean, the is that displacement map took those pixels and mathematically shifted. It's kind of like if you hold up a piece of paper and it, and it was very dark and you put a flashlight wherever that light is hitting the paper is what you can see. So if I took that, that flashlight and moved it up or down the paper, you're going to reveal more or less of that information. And that's what a displacement map does. Now, since After Effects is a uh, animation tool, anything that we keyframe, we can animate. So in essence, what's happening is we're taking that displacement map, which is this map right here. We're taking that displacement map and we're simply moving it. So if I, if I went to my move tool for a second, we're basically, I need to unlock that. We're basically doing this over time. See, what it's doing is rewriting on top of it using the displacement map based on my properties of the, let's go back to that section again, based on these properties. So if you can imagine that map, the highs and lows, the highlights, again, the black is the furthest away, the highlights are the closest. So therefore, it's going to give you a depth. It's going to give you a little bit of perspective. It's almost 3D, but not really. I actually have some three hardcore 3D friends of mine that say, well, After Effects is 2D, 2.5D. It's not really 3D. Well, probably, yes. It's not like uh, Blender or Maya or 3D Studio, it's 3D Studio Max, which are real true programs. Now, the next step is I need to bring this back into Photoshop. So first of all, I need to render this out as a movie. So how do I do this? We'll do that in our next video.